I think, what have we got, about 120 people now? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you guys have been here the longest. Would you like to say who you are, when you started, and what you're doing, oh. please? Six years ago, I'm CTO here in Storlut, and I'm very happy to work here and proud of what we're doing. Good man. So his name is Danny Aronov, it's yep. not the most important I put that up on my little <laughs> screen door. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, you were asking me about, you know, what is happening in the world. Yeah. And actually, you know, the way I look at it, the problem of the humanity, like in the last, let's say, 500 years, was how you're going to generate energy. Okay. Yeah. How you're going to create electricity since it was invented and all that. Yes. This is not the problem anymore. Yeah. The problem now shifts to how you store this energy, how you make it mobile, how you make it quick, how you make it available where you need it. Right. Because you can use all the renewables in the world, but you need to store them. You can't bring it into the car everywhere. You need to have a battery or some storage mechanism, fuel cell, what have you, that is actually mobile and efficient uh, and takes care of the planet as well. So this is our challenge. We are trying to create a ultra fast charging battery, still a lithium ion battery, but it doesn't use graphite, it uses some other metalloids that we develop here and we'll take you to the lab to see the wonder. Uh, and the idea is to create a new generation of a lithium ion battery that would be more suitable for the uh, ultra fast charging and the new uh, models of mobility that the world is uh, now uh, witnessing. Right, wonderful. And Danny, I mean, as CTO, you've got an epic challenge because you know developing batteries battery chemistry battery capability is is not an easy task there are always trade-offs between you know the charge rate or the energy density or the cost etc how are you kind of blending all those things together you have i'm sure a plan so uh how would you sum that up if you kind of could do that in a few words so, so you're absolutely right we have some trade-offs but we are focusing on ultra fast charging as don't mention and uh, the trade-off is currently a little bit of energy density, okay? We have also some, uh, some uh, premium cost, but uh, our next generation will be uh, must, uh, much more cost-effective, okay? So we are trying to be, actually to reach the numbers from, from every, every um, specification like anybody else. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, and, and, and Doran, what, what I liked about what you first said there is the perspective that we have to understand what's going on um, on a, you know, if you like, a planetary perspective. We live on the only planet that we're aware of so far in the solar system that can sustain human life. Right. You know, we're all here, we're all here for <clears throat> maybe a century or something like that if we're lucky and then we're gone. Um, people came before us, people will come after well, we us. We have our children, we have our grandchildren, yeah, exactly. we need to take care of them. Right? Exactly. You've got a couple of, have you got a couple of daughters? I have a couple of daughters and my little one is also uh, here in the office today, he's uh, 13 years old. So yeah. Uh, yeah, we need to take care of the next generation. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm really pleased to hear you bring that up spontaneously as being part, you know, you could argue the core part of what you're trying to do. Yes, it's a business. Yes, you want to make money. Yes, you want to do something interesting and exciting, and that's how you engage and keep, you know, good staff. Um, and from what I understand, you know, you've built up the business now to, uh, you know, over 100 people, and you've had hardly anybody leave in these years. You know, your attrition of, of staff is fantastic because I think, I guess everyone understands the vision and shares your, your passion. Exactly. I don't, I don't think people are here because they want to make a quick buck. Uh, I'm not here because of that and this is like a culture in, the, in, in Stordot is that we are actually making a change uh, in the world and this is not a quick change. Yeah. You know, every time you deal with materials and with chemistry and with the physics of things, this is not like in a semiconductor with my previous life I was let's say at SanDisk or at Intel, where you need to reduce the, the feature size and, and you can actually use the Moore's law for a, a very fast mm. uh, acceleration of the technology, like every 18 months you double the transistors and all that. This doesn't happen in chemistry. Mm. You have to have the patience here and the vision and stay the course, uh, working with the top people, with the top labs that we have, uh, with enough funding that fortunately we have, in order to uh, gradually make this chemical, physical, electrochemical change in the way that we store energy. Yes. 
Uh, actually, people <coughs> here love technology. That's what we are doing. We're doing very challenging technology, and everybody loves the technology here. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. So I think one, one, one more important note is about you know the composition of people that we have. You say 120 people, but these are not ordinary people. Out of the 120, <laughs> 35 are PhDs. Yeah. And these PhDs, they are not normal PhDs. <laughs> these are people that came out of you know MIT and and Stanford, uh, and San Diego University, and obviously from London, and also from uh, the Moscow, uh, and and many people from top universities that actually you know wrote papers in Nature and are leading. And so we have uh, like a top scientist leading the Arno team, right? And the top scientist on the cathode team and on the electrolyte and on the system. So these are people that really can make a difference in the world, but they are not here in order to get rich very quickly. Yes, at the yeah. end of the day, they are looking for some exit. This is not our goal. Our goal is in the next decade to bring ultra fast charging to every vehicle. Mm. You've got a battery army, basically, it's a haven't battery you? Battery army, and it's yeah. But by the way, what we heard from VCs that visited here, not, no and soldiers, other and only majors. <laughs> 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 no, but what, what we heard from uh, uh, the visitors that come here. As the, this is the best team in the world. I didn't invent this. I wouldn't have said it if I didn't hear it from more than one entity. This is the best team in the world to deal with the battery challenge that we are facing. So this is what, you know, the value of Stordot is in the, is in the people, is in the vision, and in the belief that this is a journey that is worth taking. Yeah, well, there's no doubt it's worth taking because as you said at the beginning, the challenge in terms of the fundamental challenge of energy you know where do we get the energy from how do we change the way that we've been doing that for over 100 years and can i just ask you then about bp because you've got a number of investors i think going back there was roman abramovich mm -hmm. samsung uh daimler and PDK. yeah and then and then bp so right. there you are an oil and gas giant right one of the companies that for many people is like part of this so-called evil empire um, and I personally don't see it that way because we all use oil and gas and we all use the byproducts of those in our lives so it's about how the world has worked they happen to be the companies that have enabled that but they are now like Shell are with with other investments mm -hmm. they are now switching and changing and moving into this new world so what can you say about so, that you know nobody wants to be the next Kodak right what happened mm. to Kodak they missed totally the, the evolution or revolution that the market in, in digital photography was going through uh, with, the, with the flash memory for storage and with the digital cameras and all right. that. So when a giant like that misses a mega trend in the market, they disappear. So BP first of all understood that, number one. Number two, they do understand that the first they went on the easy energy. Easy energy is let's just suck from the planet whatever mm. it can give us. Now they are thinking more about the renewables and clean energy, and they understand that you know all the 18,000 plus gas stations or forecourts that they have need to be some kind, somehow repurposed for the next generation mobility, whether it's shared, connected, autonomous, but it needs, all of this requires fast charging. You cannot sit in the center of London with uh, 15 uh, uh, spots of cars sitting all day charging. Doesn't make any sense, right? <laughs> no, that's not going to work, five, is it? Have to be five to ten minutes in and out, like today. Yes. So the whole experience of the driver needs to be maintained. The only way to maintain it is with ultra fast charging. I completely agree. And I think that uh, it's refreshing that they've started that journey now. I know a lot of people, and I include myself, would like to see it be doing more uh, and doing it quicker. Uh, but as, as you know, you, you, you both said, the fact is when you're dealing with chemistry, when you're dealing with refining and developing these different ingredients and ways in which you need to produce test cells, try validate the test cells, that inevitably takes time. That's not a simulation job. You can't sim that work. You have to physically do it to understand, you know, the performance, the safety characteristics, or, or, all the other things. And I, I'm not even an engineer or a chemist, and I know that. Take you to the lab, you will see it. I'm looking yeah. forward to that very much, Danny. So, uh, yeah, good, good, right.